This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Guys, you're looking at it right here. This is the last pass of corn planting 2020. All I gotta do is get down to that waterway and it's over with. Then we're gonna run home and switch the planter to beans and get started planting soybeans this afternoon. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I hope I got enough seed. It's gonna be really close. That's it. All the corn is in the ground. Yes! Anyway, that's enough celebrating. Let's get home and switch the planter over to soybeans and get started planting beans this afternoon. You're gonna to have to pay attention because it's gonna happen fast. It's like a NASCAR pit stop. But I wanna show you how it works and what components need to be changed and what we need to do to convert this corn planter into a soybean planter. Let's go do it. I've got a favorite spot to clean out the planter every year and it's right back here by our burn pile. There we go, just perfect. So the first thing I gotta do here is get the bulk tanks empty. I didn't have hardly any seed left in them. I managed to cut it pretty close at the end. This is about as much seed as you can get out with the blower anyway. Then I hop back in the tractor and turn the blower back on and I've gotta take every hose off of each meter and there's about eight seeds that'll come shooting out of there. If I don't do that, I'm gonna have a little bit of corn growing in the beans when I first start planting beans, and I just can't stand that. Okay, I've got all my bean plates out of the shop here. And you'll see the difference between the corn plates and the bean plates here real fast. So we're just gonna go down the planter and start taking the meters off and Switching them over to beans. Unplug the vac hose and the seed delivery hose, the latch and the uh, electrical cable. And it's just that easy to pull it right off the planter. So I just take the meter in half right here and you can see there's the corn that's left in it. I'll just shake that right down into the box. And we'll save this corn just in case we have a couple of areas to replant, but. Wanna make sure you get it all out of there. Okay. And it's just this easy to pop the corn disc off. And look at the difference between the two. The bean disc has more than twice as many holes. They're closer together and there's two rows of them. So that's one difference. We're gonna take this knockout wheel out. All you gotta do is pinch it and unlatch it just like that and it comes out. And you wanna put the soybean knock knockout wheel in that has two rows of spikes on it. So just get it started in there and get it to rest on the spring. There, that's in. And then the singulator, this is what the, uh, if you remember from one of the other videos, the seed is on the disc, spinning like this, and it goes past all of those little teeth on the singulator, and that jostles the seeds back and forth on the hole. And if there's more than one seed stuck to a hole, it'll knock one of the seeds off. So we have to take the corn singulator off and just pop it right out of the clip. And then here's the soybean singulator says soybeans right on it and there's the difference I can't see a whole lot of difference it looks like it's a little wider path for them to get through pop that soybean singulator on put the bean disc on get it lined up with those tabs pop the pin through and we should see that Singulator, there we go, or the, the knockout wheel, nubs poking through the holes. Got our soybean singulator in. Pop the meter back together and put it back on the planter. All we gotta do is do that 15 more times and we're ready to plant beans, people. So I apologize that you couldn't see that electrical connection that I was unplugging, but just looks like this right here. It plugs right into the 
motor that drives the meter. This is basically all of the power that it needs to run the motor as well as the signal to the meter how fast it needs to be running. So communication and power. Well, everything's switched over and I'm headed to the seed dealer to load the seed. We live really close to our Pioneer dealer, so we just pull right into his yard and he just loads the bean seed right into our planter. It works really well. Okay, I like to start right in the middle of the field when I'm planting beans. All right, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see any of this or not, because I'm facing into the sun, but I need to switch the crop to soybeans. Select the hybrid, and I've got that in my notes here on my phone, 29A25X. So, I can bring that right up here, 29A25. Divide that over 83 acres. So I need to set my population basically at 135, 134,000 as well. Set it at 135,000 and I'll knock it back to 134. Okay. Then I need to go to setup really quick to crops. Make sure it knows what plates I'm running. Okay, seeds per disc 80. That's good. Excellent. I think we're ready to plant beans. So we're gonna start our vacuum on remote two and remote three. Okay, we're gonna turn the vacuum down once we get the seed disc loaded. We don't run 20 pounds of vacuum on beans. We only run about 10 to 11. So go into the tractor hydraulics, and just start backing that off for those two remotes until I can get this vacuum reading down to somewhere in the 10 to 11 range. So we got our master plant switch on, we got our swath control on so it'll shut off in the waterways. I've got my heading selected, uh, so there's nothing to do but plant beans. I'm gonna go ahead and set the planter down here and get the air pressure down on the row cleaners. I'm gonna turn it up to maybe 50 pounds down just to start with. We'll see how that goes. And commence bean planting. Oh, forgot to set my field crews. There we go. And we're going to run a little faster planting beans than we did planting corn. I'm going to look at the downforce map most of the time to make sure we're staying in the ground. In just a bit here, we're going to get out and check and see how we're doing. Looking good for downforce, looking really good. And we're planting right between the old corn rows. You don't want to plant right on the rows because you're going to be dumping your seeds right into the old root balls. So we're putting it right in between. I like to run just a little bit closer to one row than the other because you get in a little bit more of a mellow spot there. You get out of the wheel tracks that you made last fall with the combine a little bit more. All right, let's get out and see how the planter's doing. So I just realized I haven't captured much nighttime footage this year. I don't really know why, but we do plant at night too. So the beans are going in good. Okay, well I've got my trusty sidekick with me this morning. I'm gonna have her do a little interview with me and ask me some of the questions that you've been asking in the comment section so I can answer them. She can learn something, you can learn something. We can get some beans planted. Let's do it. Some people wanna know why you no-till the beans. 
why do I no-till the beans? Okay, so there's a few reasons we no-till the beans. First, it's nice to be able to leave the corn stock cover on the ground because it keeps the water from washing the soil away, helps prevent erosion, wind and water erosion. Also, it saves the cost of running your tillage tool across the field with your tractor and burning all that fuel and all that labor. And it really doesn't affect the yield very much at all. We found that no-tilling the beans the way we do with this planter, and it does a good job, that it's really just not worth running the tillage implement over it. Some people are wondering why your brother is never in the videos. Okay, why my brother's never in the videos? He's not really interested in doing filming of his own, so that's not the kind of thing that he's into. So you will see him in the course of working cattle and baling hay in the summertime and occasionally for other odds and ends videos but you just really won't see him all that much especially when we're out in the field doing field work because he's 25 miles away uh, doing field work for the guy that he works for. Somebody asked if you're the only one uh, who works on this farm or is there other people? Okay, uh, no I'm not the only one that works on this farm. There is one other guy that works here full time that manages the operation. Um, so I work with him on a daily basis and then during the spring and the fall, there's a couple other people that get involved that are also part of that family that owns this farm. Um, they're related and they come in and run the tillage equipment, the combine, the grain cart, uh, give me a break in the planter, kind of whatever needs to be done during the busy times of the year. And uh, Tina, your mommy, actually got to run the green cart quite a lot last fall, so she's been doing that. Hopefully she'll keep doing that. That was really cool. So there's anywhere from two of us to five of us, depending on what season it is and what we've got going on. You're really smiley right now. Eric wants to know which tractor is your favorite to drive. Okay, well, Eric, my favorite tractor to drive is this one that I'm driving right now, the 8285R John Deere. The cab is unbelievably amazing. It's super comfy. You think the seat's way better, right? She doesn't like the seat in the red tractor because the back doesn't come up high enough. It's only like this tall. Um, this tractor, the hydraulics are great. The transmission's fantastic. It's pretty quiet. It's not quite as quiet as the case. The case has the quiet factor going for it. Um, and at first I liked having all the shifting right on the throttle on the case and lifting the implement with the buttons on the throttle, but sometimes it doesn't lift when you, or you push the wrong button, you push the three point. I just love the layout of the John Deere a lot better. I feel like it's a little bit, oh, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. I feel like it's a little bit more well built, but it just is. We haven't had nearly as much trouble with the John Deere as we have with the case. Uh, we've owned this tractor three years longer than we have the case, and I bet we've had four times as many service calls on the case as we have on this one. What are you doing? Put your tongue away. I'm trying to be serious. This is a serious video. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Eric. This is my favorite tractor. And then when I'm making hay, um, using the older equipment, Dad's 1066 is pretty cool. Uh, I love the sound of that chrome exhaust pipe with the turbo screaming away. That's a pretty cool tractor. I like it. Thanks for asking. And actually, I'm not giving enough credit to my old antique tractors. I have a Massey Harris 33 and a Massey Harris 44. Boy, do I love those tractors. But obviously, that's a whole different category. Is there anything you don't like about the precision planting stuff? Anything I don't like about the precision plant? Yes, there's something I don't like about the precision planting stuff. Let me show you this. Come here. Come take a look. So on the 2020, there's this master plant switch. And if you shut that switch off, the whole planter just stops planting right now. So when everything's going okay when you're planting, there's no sound. Like right now, you don't hear any beeping or anything. You only hear warning sounds if there's something going wrong with one of the rows or if you're getting close to the end of the field. It's also silent when you have the master plant switch off. And a lot of times when you're first starting a field, you're looking to make sure you're getting everything lined up and you're looking back at the planter to make sure the row cleaners aren't digging too much. Uh, you wanna make sure you're not getting too close to the fence. Even though we're auto steering that, you like to look just to double check once in a while. Anyway, 
I've planted really long distances with that master plant switch off and you got to lift the planter up, turn around, go back to the beginning of the field, start over again and turn it on. There have actually been a couple times where I've been so mad about it that I've forgotten to turn it back on a second time. Anyway, come on precision planting. Put a little warning buzzer in there that says, dude, your planter's down, you're going, but your switch is off. One other thing I don't really like, you have to go into the setup, into the crop setup, and you have to manually set your misplaced seed limits. And they give you a chart that you can look at based on the width of your rows and the population you're trying to plant. And you have to go in here and tell it what to define as a misplaced seed. So when I change from 30,000 to 35,000, I have to go in here and adjust this misplaced seed limit to tell the monitor when to decide that my seeds are not placed properly. To me, that just seems like something that the monitor should be able to figure out on its own. If it knows that I'm planting 30 inch rows and it knows that I've set the population to 35,000, it should know how far apart the seeds need to be in the furrow. I shouldn't have to go in and tell it how far apart the seeds should be. Anyway, that's another thing they could fix. But overall, super great system. I love it. Thanks for asking, Kaylee. Okay, another question. How many acres can you plant with one bag of seed corn? <laughs> you got a microphone now? How many acres can I plant with one bag of seed corn? It depends a little bit on the population. Every bag has approximately 80,000 seeds in it, so roughly two and a half acres. Pretty close. I think my math is not terrible. Okay, so what about beans? So with soybeans, uh, each bag would have 140,000 seeds in it, and you plant about 140,000 seeds per acre. So a bag of soybean seed would cover one acre, but we get our beans in boxes, as you see. And a box has 40. A box has 45 units or bags worth of soybean seed in it. Thank you. Okay, last question for today. When is lunch? <laughs> when is lunch? Are you hungry? Yes. <laughs> um, I think your mom will be here in about 20 minutes. Can I have a snack? No. Aww. So what do you think of planting beans, Andrew? Good. It's good? You look like you just woke up. You okay? <laughs> so this last field that I'm just finishing right now, we do normally no-till all of our beans. But this is uh, custom work for a neighbor, and this man's cows were in this field all winter long. This is the area where the round hay bale feeders were set up, and it was quite a mess. Obviously, he cleaned up all the hay and all the manure, but we had to work it down to get it leveled off because the cows, when it was wet in the wintertime in the early spring, had really rutted this up and made it a mess. So we had to work this field before we could plant beans in it. Well, I got 12 acres left to plant and I'm headed back to the shop to take about eight of the row cleaners off that have got barbed wire and plastic net wrap and plastic twine wrapped around them to the point where they won't turn. Um, this field that we're planting right now was two different fields last year. It belongs to one of our neighbors. We're custom farming it for him. And it has now become one field, but the place where the fence used to be for years and years and years had a lot of barbed wire pieces in it that. Nobody could have seen until we started planting and I got them wrapped up in the row cleaners. I had to take one of the gauge wheels off in the field. It was wrapped up underneath one of the gauge wheels. And then the area where the cattle get fed every winter, uh, no matter what you do, you just can't find all the net wrap. But guess what? The row cleaners can find it really well. And they don't push it out of the way. They just tie it in knots around themselves. So I'm on the way back to fix that up. And then we'll go unfold again and plant for about 35 to 40 minutes, hopefully, and be done.
I am literally this far away from being completely done with planting season 2020 on the first day of May. This is unbelievable. What a great run it's been. What an absolutely great spring. Plant in the dust and your bins will bust. That's what the old timers say. That's it right there. Well, I warned you, sometimes planting season can just go by in a flash. You can't hardly see it on its way past. This was a great spring, unbelievable conditions, really good soil conditions, nice planting conditions. The only thing you could complain about is it was a little too windy. We haven't been able to spray as much as we wanted to. Um, we'll get caught up with that, it's fine. It's not gonna rain a bunch. I am uh, in a state of mental shock right now from being done planting, so I don't really know how I feel. I'm kind of excited kind of relieved that all the seeds are in the ground. I'm also aware that I'm kind of going to be a little sad in the next few days because there's nothing that I love more than the excitement of field work. The go, go, go. I kind of live on it and it's exciting. And I've also really had a great time sharing it with you guys this year. This will give me a chance to kind of catch up on some of the responding to comments, editing videos, and ultimately I've been distracted from this topic because of planting, but I will be addressing in a future video the current state of agriculture given the disaster that we're facing right now because of the coronavirus and how farmers are having to deal with that. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being such a big part of this. Thanks for caring about us and what we're doing. And I really look forward to sharing the rest of the growing season and harvest and winter and the next few years with you as well. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. <laughs>